48 days ago, a magnitude 8.1 earthquake struck in the Kermadec Islands of New Zealand. It was the largest earthquake in three years, and luckily it struck offshore and did not produce a devastating tsunami. The earthquake is a hit for the earthquake prediction model in all ways, in timing the largest seismic events and in location forecasting. The latter part we discussed the day after the event, but the primary timing element of forecasting megaquakes can only be confirmed about two months later, and here we are. For those who know our 2015 paper, you know this is about the solar polar magnetic fields. The findings and subsequent confirmations are clear. The Sun's 11-year cycle, combined with the Earth's annual orbital spanning from 7 degrees north to 7 degrees south of the Sun's equator, is controlling of the largest earthquakes. What these 11 and 1-year patterns do to the Earth's exposure to the Sun's polar magnetic field looks like the top panel here. The last three years are zoomed in below and we'll come back to that. Up top you see both the 1 and 11 year patterns in the small and larger oscillations of the polar fields. We track the north, south, and compute an average in yellow. The raw data comes from Stanford University's Wilcox Solar Observatory. If you wish to get the full background, read our 2015 paper for free at the link at quakewatch.net. And if you are going to go that route, Please also consider taking the time to read some of the excellent works that have cited our paper. The NASA scientists and university professors that have cited the work have each made excellent advances in their own sub-foci of these fields. Coming back to the chart, what we found was that the largest earthquakes, magnitude 8 and higher, were striking unusually close in time to the peaks and polarity reversals in the curve. We found more than double the earthquakes expecting to fit the pattern with a 1 in 100,000 chance of error and in the subsequent machine learning simulations, 1 in a million. So given that we have had a magnitude 8 event, we can look at the chart here weeks later and see that indeed the earthquake struck at the negative peak of the sun's south polar fields. The reason you have to wait about two months is you have to see if the curve is going to come back down or come away from the reversal or basically look back and confirm what you thought you saw. It is on its way back down now and this is yet another confirmation that these major events strike within about a week of the critical times of the solar polar magnetic fields. Up next here, we're going to watch some archived footage of the location forecasting analysis of this very event and a bit on the solar polar fields and earthquake correlation. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe everyone. A major seismic uptick has struck the southwest Pacific today. It matches the earthquake prediction system we have laid out at quakewatch.net. Let's go through the luckily ocean-bound event that would have been devastating if it had struck populated areas. Magnitude 8.1 is a big one. With multiple magnitude 7s, this makes it the largest seismic uptick in years. Magnitude 8.1 is the largest earthquake in more than three years. And so, let's go to quakewatch.net and head right over to the prediction center. The Blood Echo wind map can be found there, and this heavy red you see bending down into the earthquake zone is the result of Blood Echoes, the deep rumbles that strike the low velocity zone and even the transition zone. The wind map element you see over lane is meant to show the pressure cells, and identifying the low pressure is critical as well. In this case, we'll start with the Blood Echoes, six of them preceding the big quake in the last two and a half days far more than what is required by the model, and one of them was of notable size in just the hours before the big one today. The second part of the model requires strong global electric circuit action, and these low cell upward return zones are literally hugging the fault areas. It is screaming that something energetic is happening there. And with both atmospheric and blood echo signatures, this is a location forecasting hit. But what about the timing? On that page, you will also find a link to learn more about coronal hole seismic forcing through the interplanetary magnetic field. This coronal hole is transequatorial, facing Earth now, and is directly connected to Earth magnetically at the moment. This is the number one timing factor in earthquake upticks, even down to the ebb and flow of magnitude 6 range, but certainly as you get up higher into these bigger magnitudes. You can read more about the solar magnetic fields and earthquakes in our two 2015 papers. Learn more about our overall forecasting method with the 2017 and 2018 papers and videos, and the entirety of Chapter 7 is dedicated to earthquake prediction in our textbook. You can find that at otf.cells.com. 
It is truly the best when these models can be confirmed in a way that does not result in massive destruction. That was the case today. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone. This is the period of 2010 through 2013, six largest earthquakes, all above magnitude 8, with two of them happening on the same day there in 2012. Vital point number one, throughout our existing record we see the spikes in magnetism of the sun correlated in time with the largest earthquakes, but also the polarity reversals as you see on the right where the quake occurred as the southern fields in red had their polarity reversal. So let's go look to another time period. From the left, we have blue positive peak, total polarity magnetism reversal in yellow for the second one, northern fields in blue peak again, and a rare triple curve reversal on the right side. These again, largest quakes during this time period. I'll continue. Two on the left are polarity reversals. The middle earthquake was a rare outlier that didn't fit, but on the right, we have a double polarity reversal in yellow with two major seismic events, followed by another at the southern red fields peak up in the positive. Again, largest events during this time period.